I want to share with you something that has been bothering me for a very long time. In fact, it is something that has made me very angry. And I have been waiting for an opportunity to share this with the world. You might be asking the question, what exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that there are a group of people in our society globally who have been forgotten, who have been ignored. Many have been disrespected and even devalued. You want to know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Generation Z, also known as Gen Z. Those who were born between 1997 and 2012, aged between 10 and 25 years old. You know, for a long time, we, and I say we because I happen to be a millennial, we as millennials, Gen Xers, boomers, and even those who are much older, we've been telling and expecting Gen Z to act in a certain way, to do certain things so as to be successful. Not really bad, but here's the problem. Many of us who are much older than Gen Z have not taken the time to ask them what exactly do they want? What do they need and what are they expecting from us? And I'm here today to stand up as a champion on behalf of Generation Z. And many times I've had conversations with either Gen Z or millennials, Gen Xers and boomers, and this is what I've shared, that I am willing to go to my grave site fighting on behalf of a generation that is critical in our society. So I want to share with you some things that Gen Z want more of. But before I do so, I want to share some of the stereotypes that Gen Z have been labeled. They've been called entitled. You know, those group of people who feel like the whole world is owed to them, that they don't have to push themselves to get anything. Many of them have been labeled as lazy. I've had conversations with parents, with teachers, with professors, educators, business owners, leaders, employers. And a lot of the times when we're having conversations with Gen Z, some of them have told me that these members of this society don't want to work hard. Let me just give you some little insight on what's going on today with TED Talk. The people who put this TED Talk on happen to be Gen Z and they did a pretty damn good job. And so we've called them lazy, me being a millennial too. But the reality is other generations are lazy too. The lazy parent who worked so hard for 18 hours a day and became successful with a house and a home, yet they are not invested in their kids' lives emotionally and mentally. The teacher who works so hard to make sure students pass exams, yet at the same time they fail to put the effort into connecting. The business owner and employer who wants that Gen Z member to be so successful for the bottom line, but they have not effectively taught and mentored that individual. And so I want to share with you the things that Gen Z want more of. Six things of what I believe there are more of. Number one, they want more safety from us as millennials, Gen Xers, boomers, and even those who are older. They want to be able to share some truths with us without feeling attacked. I had the opportunity years ago in 2018 as an instructor at Buffalo State College to mentor a number of young men and women outside of the classroom. And we met on Thursdays in the fall of that year at 7 to 8.30 p.m. 
And while we were in the union, we would have conversations around the topic of intentional living. And as we did so, I tried to practice what I preach. So I provided a safe environment for them to share. Some of the things that they shared were so painful, yet it was necessary for me to hear and advocate for them outside of that room. Things like, we go to school to get good grades, or at least we've been told to, so that we can get a good job. But the problem is, a number of them would say, many of us are not learning things that are relevant to our real life. The kind of jobs that we, they're being told that they should pursue are not areas of their passion. Some of them shared the fact that they weren't being told about how to live their purpose. It was important for me to listen. And we all need to listen and listen from a perspective of giving them a safe space. Gen Z want more understanding or the word empathy from us. One of my heroes, Stephen Covey, once stated that we must first seek to understand, then to be understood. And when it comes to Gen Z, many of us who are not Gen Z, who are much older, want to be understood. But we don't take time to understand. We are not taking time to understand that many members of Gen Z, and perhaps some in this room, have had to deal with depression. I've had multiple emails and even text messages where members of Gen Z that I mentor have told me they've had to deal with anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, and even attempt of suicide. It's important that we seek to understand them. We must understand them. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to provide vulnerability for them. They, they want us to open up. Now, Brene Brown, one of the greatest TED Talk speakers of all time, in my opinion, once stated that vulnerability is courage. We must have the courage to share with Gen Z areas of our lives that are uncomfortable, like making mistakes, dropping the ball, and again, great leaders don't just talk about how to be successful. They model it. And I try to do that, for example, in the classroom with my students. When I send an email, and in that email, I end up realizing after they've emailed me that some of the assignments I gave them were not clearly written. Multiple times I've sat in a room the next day that we met. I stopped the whole class and I said, tell me the truth. Where have I dropped the ball? And being vulnerable to hear the truth. And the beautiful thing about being vulnerable with Gen Z is that they are able to then trust us. Gen Z want more of our mentorship. Gen Z are in a world of crisis. I don't believe this thing that members of Gen Z, younger people, don't want to learn. They just might not want to learn from certain people. And let me say something. Gen Z can smell phony from afar. But when you're authentic and genuine and you truly care and you're willing to show them the way, they are willing to learn. This picture up there is of myself. I've been able to mentor a number of individuals in U.S. and the U.K. and Kenya. But these individuals are young men and women, university students, and young professionals who are hungry for change in their country, who have been ignored, who have been devalued, and sometimes even leveraged. And these young people, I met with them in January of 2022, when I went there to pour into Gen Z. And they were hungry to learn about success, about how to navigate an environment where once you graduate with one, two, maybe even three degrees, you struggle to figure out how to get into your um, profession because of the, the challenges, especially somewhere like Kenya with corruption. We need to mentor the next generation. Gen Z want more authentic and genuine relationships. 
a young man out of many that I've poured into, who goes by the name of Nicholas Kelly. I had the opportunity last night to have a conversation and rehearse in front of him. Him and I met in 2018 when I was in Buffalo State College, and he was one of those group of people. And so he had helped me prepare for this TED Talk. See, relationships are not one way. They are two-way. And Gen Z want authentic, genuine relationships where we can learn from each other. The last want that they have, and frankly, they need it, is affirmation and appreciation. Celebrating Gen Z in a world that heavily criticizes them. I want to share a quick story of a young gentleman by the name of Didi Victor, who I have mentored for a number of years now, and he is like a son to me. Didi was born in Kisumu, Kenya, right on the shores of Lake Victoria, in a little area known as Dunga Beach. This young man, despite major obstacles, has been resilient up until today. You see, around the age of eight, he lost his mother. And then right after that, a few years later, he lost his father. And at that moment, he could have chosen to give up. But he made a decision to keep going with the support of the community as well as well-wishers. He got to go to university at the University of Eldoret in Eldoret, Kenya. And he went for environmental science, graduated, went back to Dunga Beach and began a movement of mobilizing people to be able to curb pollution and care for the environment. Not long after that, he faced some challenges where there were people who were supposed to help them, who I'm sure were millennials, Gen Xs, and boomers, made it difficult for him. Like the local government who promised that they will give him fruit seeds so that he could plant trees to support lactating mothers. And then he goes back there to get the seeds and they tell him he has to pay. Something has to change. So why is all of this so important? Well... Gen Z members of our community are members of our family. They're members of our community. They are students in our classrooms. They are our emerging workforce. And they also are emerging leaders. See, it is important we, that we give them more of what they want and more of what they need so that as we do so, we can help create and develop a generation of passionate, committed, loyal, authentic, and transformational leaders. In addition to doing that, what happens is this beautiful synergy between generations. Where as we work together, Gen Z, Millennials, Gen Xs, Boomers, and even those who are much older, we get to make a huge difference in our world. But if we don't do that, here's what will happen. We will cause Gen Z to reproduce the negative effects that other generations have done to others. And so I wanna challenge all of us tonight to step up. Those of us who are millennials, I'll start with myself. Those of us who are uh, Gen Xers, boomers, Let's be a voice to Gen Z and let's amplify their voices and let them know that we are with them and we will be with them no matter the cost. Thank you.